Stadiums remain dark. Good morning. This is Mike Crane with Sports. Thank God. Day four now of the baseball strike. Good. No talks yesterday. Today, Richard Ravitch and Donald Fear will speak, but only on the telephone because of the bitterness between the two. Ravitch says he will not meet face-to-face -face with Fear after an incident that occurred last week. Ravitch says Fear verbally abused him and then became physical. He called me a faggot and then he pushed me. Ravitch says until he receives an apology, he'll strictly use the telephone. Uh, In golf, what a performance from Nick Price, who won the PGA Championships by six strokes yesterday. But this is mm -hmm. your kind of station. Rock and roll, Jethro Tell? Yeah, play all that Jethro oh. Tell, play, them, play yeah. all that Led Zepp and Doobies. Right. And all right. So I'm coming up 95 and I uh, have to stop and get some coffee and some cigarettes, you know. And it's six or seven miles down the road. We finally find this little deli out in the middle of nowhere. And I walk in there, and this is a woman's buying a counter. I said, give me a couple of packs of Marlboro Lights. And she says, oh, what's Dr. Guida going to say about that? <laughs> <laughs> is, is the Ed in the car? If your radio sounds funny in the morning, you're listening to Imus in the morning. That was the hotel. It's a great hotel. The Omni uh, Biltmore. Omni Biltmore in Providence. Yeah. No, it's a great hotel. Did you watch any movies? No. I don't. I didn't have the clapper for him. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Chris in the morning. Yeah. Yeah. Sports Radio 66, WFAM. Whatever happened to Tom Cole? Flashback. All right, here now from heaven, the once and future senior political analyst. This is really weak, isn't it? <laughs> For Imus in Washington, Richard Nixon. Yes, uh, very good to be here. Yeah. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, I was in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gosh, but how I've missed that. So how's by you, Dono? Fine. All's well that doesn't smell, I suppose. Uh, well, I fine, yeah. <laughs> how are you? Well, I'm not at liberty to reveal that information. Mm -hmm. uh, as you pointed out on several occasions, uh, J.D., there were times, as you put it somewhat indelicately, that I uh, wasn't in that box. <laughs> now, uh, I could be dead. I could simply be on some highly sensitive mission for the Department of State. I could be in the order mic at Bob's Big Boy in Biloxi. <laughs> Beyond that, I can't comment. Let me just uh, close the subject enigmatically by saying Elvis is dead. Some say. <laughs> now then to the headline issues of the day. Uh, matters that compel my return to your program, Donna. Oh, okay. Especially since my new uh, circumstances leave me free of all restraints, limitations, and normal bounds of decency. Right. So let me begin by saying, and I mean this with every fiber of my being, uh, this comes right from the heart, I imagine. Okay. You. <laughs> now then, anticipating your question, J.D., uh, just what was it that I found so compelling that it forced me to return to your very fine program? Yes. Uh, was it this Haitian thing, or North Korea, Bosnia, Rwanda, all that? Or the fact that this utter boob holding my White House in a stranglehold, Bubber Clinton, doesn't have a fart's chance in a wind tunnel of figuring out what to do? <laughs> the short dick answer? No. Rather, issue one, Dono, is that even from beyond the pale, as it were, the bastards won't leave me alone. Well, they are still kicking around Dick Nixon. Did you see what they found? The Haldeman Diary. I for sure thought I'd burn that damn thing, but no. And then that prissy holier-than-thou nightline decides it would be cute to broadcast excerpts. It's not like consigning my legacy to history wasn't difficult enough already. Oh, no. Now Koppel has to get his licks in. <laughs> Thinking uh, I can only surmise that I am no longer able to respond, Nightline reveals through the Haldeman Diary that I once railed against blacks, that Billy Graham lectured me about Jews, and that John Ehrlichman covertly investigated Teddy Kennedy. Well, well, surprise. I am able to respond through my continued affiliation with your very fine program, J.D. Okay. So let me reply, if I may, point by point. Haldeman wrote that I once said, in discussing welfare reform, that the whole problem is the blacks. Okay, let me be perfectly clear in this regard. Of course the problem is the blacks. Who the hell else is on welfare? That'll be fine. Other than about a half a zillionaire Caribbean basin, boys. Next item. Dr. Graham's observation that certain, not all, certain Jews constitute a problem. Mm -hmm. uh, here's my view, and uh, see what you think about this, honestly. Uh, Did you ever find yourself buying for the same parking space with some old Jewish broad, <laughs> and that's not a problem? Shut up. Who do you think is going to win that little confrontation, huh? Well, it was easier to get out of Somalia than to get in that f***ing parking space, okay? <laughs> and finally, this thing about Ehrlichman running a secret probe of Senator Kennedy in the aftermath of Chappaquiddick back there in 69. Right. Let's be rational. J.D., what should we have done? Run an open investigation? <laughs> Get the hell out of here. It was Teddy. Hell, I had a separate enemies list just for him. Just numbered a paper from one to a thousand and then wrote his name in every f***ing space. Really? 
Excuse me. If somebody could have gotten him back in the water, I would have thrown anvils at him. <laughs> now his kid Patrick is running for Congress, starting his political career. Well, Another Kennedy? Do these people do anything other than breed? Well, <laughs> Jesus. What do you suppose he's running on? The Willie Smith, Uncle Teddy, Blue Dot, Bar Hopping ticket? <laughs> Harsh, I know, but I no longer care. And so, as I leave you, let me share this. What really was in the box, J.D., was something you're very familiar with yourself. Yeah. Quite simply, a dead dick. <laughs> and yet, one who is still available, as we've just demonstrated here, for the occasional kicking around. <laughs> oh, uh, yes, sir. Would you like fries with that, sir? I down in my easy chair and turned on channel two. A bad gun across the chasing post. We of the Don Imus broadcast career. Uh, Andy? Have you been following this Imus in the Morning National Victory Lap, the reinflated lung tour? <laughs> I have. I have no choice in the matter, in fact. Believe me, it's increasingly tedious. These monthly junkets to, frankly, places that you've never heard of or would ever go. They all seem to be the kinds of geographic black holes down which are dropped clients of the Federal Witness Relocation Program. <laughs> and the most recent, yeah. Providence, Rhode Island whose mayor, for certain considerations, as I understand it, has made the town a willing repository of Tyson Foods chicken waste and spent nuclear power plant fuel rods. It is also the home of Imus in the Morning affiliated radio station, WWRX, the classic rock station. Yeah. The worst thing about this victory lap undertaking is that we who appear on the program, ipso facto, get dragged along. And believe me, when I got into this business, among my goals was not hanging out with Buddy Cianci, regardless of the shameful kiss-up job recently lavished on the mayor by Boston Globe columnist Mike Barnacle. And there's an endorsement, eh? Like Roger Altman vouching for Tony Coelho, or the moral equivalent of Michael Jackson covering Heartbreak Hotel. Well, look for a moment at this U.S. map I've got here. All these push pins represent Imus's affiliated stations. Remember, we've actually got to go to these places. <laughs> Let's see. Here's Aiken, South Carolina. Must remember to pack my white socks, toothpick, gasoline, and noose for that one. <laughs> Here's Burlington, Vermont. Yeah. Can't wait for that. 50,000 people who still peg their buildings together, <laughs> who've been set upon by a regiment of homosexual, zither-toting, vacant-eyed artists whose feet are filthy. <laughs> well, here's another back in South Carolina, oh. Myrtle Beach. Yeah. Wonderful place. The humidity is so high, even the hookers are molding. <laughs> and this, as I understand it, will be our next destination, Sioux City, Iowa. Yeah. Why? Ames is closed? <laughs> this is Tucson, Arizona, the town that time, but regrettably nothing else, forgot. Yeah. Indian ruins and ruined Indians. <laughs> Here's Cleveland, where we're assured a real renaissance has taken place. Yeah. What's that mean? That Stosh is now calling himself Leonardo de Pulaski? <laughs> and here's one I'm as often mentions, El Paso, Texas, which very soon might just as well fall off the face of the earth. <laughs> the very minute Fred Imus moves to Santa Fe. Yeah. Well, as you can see, there's 40-odd Imus affiliate locations now, yeah. but I'm not worried. I'm sure we will all have killed ourselves or each other before we get to the first 20 or so. <laughs> Imus in the morning, 2020 sports. The game is from hey, Bubba, how come you're, like, so bummed out? Well, Beavis, I just read the results of my latest popularity poll. Yeah, yeah, lots of people think you suck. And I'm not sure I'm going to still have a job in a few years, so I figure I'd better start looking into alternative careers. Like what? Well, seeing as I'm so in touch with my inner child, I thought I'd try my hand at toy making. Here, check these out. Wow, these are cool. What are they? That's my line of action figures, the Mighty Morphin Power Brokers. See how Pat Ireland transforms into an era asaurus? Cool. What's the deal with the Barbie doll? That's not Barbie, that's Hillary. She's the girl's fashion doll of the 90s. Strong, independent. She's not only smartly dressed, she's also really smart. Here's Malibu Hillary, 
Christoph Hare, Hillary? Investment Hillary? She comes with a vacation dream house. That's homo stuff. I want something that blows up. Then you'll want G.I. Janet Reno with Kung Fu Grip. Pull the string and she sets something on fire. Fire! Fire! Um, how about a board game? This is show, but don't tell. Boys roll the dice to see how many times they can expose themselves to women in hotel rooms before one of them initiates a sexual harassment suit. Nice tweeter. Thank you. What's this? Chemistry set? That one was my brother's idea. <laughs> I'm best in the morning. Sports on WFAN, the flagship station of New York Jets football. <laughs> Say, Howie Rose with you on the fan till 2 o'clock this afternoon, and don't worry, we'll find plenty to talk about at 718-937-6666. So there's no baseball. Did you live? Did you get through the weekend? You know, when you really think about it, we might have had a couple of long, we might have had two very aggravating afternoons here in New York. Well, I guess the Yankee game with the Jays was supposed to have been last night, right? But we did have rain last night, and we had... 8937-6666, the phone number. Howie Rose with you, WFAN Strike Central. Catharsis Radio. Paul Olden standing by with the update. I'll see you on the other side with more of your calls and who knows what else. Sports Radio. Olden with 2020 Sports on WFAN, the flagship station of New York Jets football. <laughs> Until 2 o'clock this afternoon. And we are taking your phone calls at 718-937-6666. Hey, you know, those 108,000-plus fans that are expected to show up in Mexico City tonight for the Cowboys-Oilers game are not necessarily... Well, obviously they're there to see out of CBA since last September 15th, and they'll start talking about a new one soon. Hank Ola joins us after the update. Jets football. Four minutes after 12, Howie Rose with you on the fan, moving towards 2 o'clock this afternoon. Mike and the Mad Dog are back tomorrow, so is Russ. I and Bill in later this afternoon, take you through at 2, all the way up until 7, and we will get back to the phones in short order. At 718-937-6666, but we are going to switch gears a little bit and get off of everyone's complaints about the baseball situation and talk about the Giants. Not 1981, no. And the players and owners were both willing to sit it out. I give the players more credit back then because individually they didn't have as much money. Now, we're talking about guys that could sit it out for the rest of their lives and they would have enough money to live on. The owners, they've got a lot of money. Is it in the right places, though? Sports Radio 66. The fan, WFAN. Look out, which means you've got approximately 16 days to get it done. I'm not as convinced anymore that we're going to see any more regular season games. But there will be a full season. We agree on that. We will agree on that. There will be a World Series champion in 1994. Sports Radio 66. The fan, WFAN. You can hear him. He's making a $7,000 movie. Coming up on the Iris in the morning program.
chief campaign strategist for Bill Clinton and Mary Matlin, uh, bungled the Bush campaign. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what? I think there's a, there is a uh, there's an attractiveness about your arguing. What happens is, is she gets these people on her show and she intimidates them. You know, she's a kind of these little weeny Democrats and she's <laughs> around and they don't say anything. Hi, Liz. This ain't your mother's morning show. This is unbelievable. Folks, listen to this. We are in the midst of a recovery. This president has lowered this deficit by $500 billion. It could be so dollars. much what? stronger. It, what? it could be a continuation of the Bush policy. That's what you think, right? Clearly. What Bush policy? Yeah. Name a Bush policy. And that, I mean, that's an oxymoron. Good morning, people. Welcome to Section 1, Unit 1, ECCR, Emergency Clinton Credibility Rehab. Now then, as you know, the current commander-in-chief, William Clinton Pinocchio, <laughs> is saddled with the single largest believability deficit ever recorded. Yeah. A thing of staggering proportions, it has now caused Mr. Clinton to become his very own national security risk. <laughs> no one knows what he might say, when he might say it, or how. <laughs> Former Congressman Leon Panetta and Judge Abner Mikva are the latest to be assigned the task of trying to keep this president from lacerating the facts. Yeah. But their faith in their own chances of succeeding can best be seen when they stand with their teeth gritted, their eyes squeezed shut, and their fingers jammed in their ears any time the president gets within five feet of a microphone. <laughs> a quick review is in order. Okay. Private, catch those lights. Give me the overhead. Slide one. The information on the screen is also contained in the memo handed to you as you entered the building. Let's look it over. The title, as you see, is... Prevarications, Presidential, Clinton, Jefferson Williams. <laughs> I'll enumerate only some of them, as we hope to get out of here before the time every American really is covered by universal health care. <laughs> Prevarication number one, I didn't duck the draft. Yeah. Number two, I didn't inhale. Number three, I didn't hose Jennifer Flowers. <laughs> number four, I never exactly said middle class tax cut. <laughs> Five, Hillary handled the Whitewater investment. Yeah. Six, Chelsea handled the Whitewater investment. <laughs> Seven, Sox handled the Whitewater investment. <laughs> Eight, I don't know Paula Corbin Jones. Certainly not well enough to ask her to <laughs> me. Nine, a hundred thousand dollars on a thousand dollars down is just savvy investing. Yeah. Ten, I don't even know Marky Post. No. Eleven, I look at the term universal as euphemism. <laughs> Twelve, I have full faith and confidence in Mr. Foster, in Mr. Nussbaum, in the entire White House travel office staff, in Mr. Espy, Ron Brown, my old pal Roger Altman, Lonnie Guineer, Kimba Wood, and last but not least, Johnny Watt. We decided to print only these few people, as trees are an essential commodity, and the f***ing rainforests are already under extreme stress, as you know. Yeah. Now then, how do we restore Clinton credibility, given the monumental dimensions of the problem? I say we go back to the beginning. What was this president's first major prevarication? Yes, Private? Weaseling out of the Vietnam War, sir. Very good. Slap yourself. <coughs> so, to begin rebuilding, start at the foundation. I say give Bill Clinton a rifle, send him to Vietnam now. <laughs> and when he deplanes at the airport, have him shoot some dirt poor son of a bitch, a la Benito Aquino, mm. say a baggage handler or what have you, yeah. <laughs> hopefully touching off a small firefight before he escapes. Yeah. That way... He can demonstrate some degree of machismo, you know. but as the draft dodge issue, maybe save Haiti from some trumped up U.S. D-Day, prevent about half the population of this country from doing a George Bush on their shoes every time that Marine salutes him as he steps off the helicopter, yeah. and maybe, just maybe, let Bill Clinton serve out the rest of his term without having some 101-year-old guy in a BFW hat come up to him in a receiving line somewhere and beat him half to death with a cane. <laughs> Any questions? No. Good. Yeah. Tuck this away in your folder marked Operation TTHB for Take That Hill Bill. That is all. <laughs> the late General George S. Patton Jr. here on the Iverson Warning Program. 2020 Sports. Now we'll get Jerry to this thing done and over with and, and get back out there and play. Then head owner Bud Selig was asked what he'd like to say to the fans. Screw you! Certainly different approaches to fan relations. Uh, so, you know, this would be, you're really just trying too hard with these things. You think so? Yes. <laughs> I'm going to have a talk with you during this next break. I'll look uh, forward to it. Well, I mean, come on here. Back. Grizzly Jackson can't last long. 
concerned today, absolutely. Michael with his paisley dong <laughs> tends to be indiscreet. <laughs> hey, I'm in. Hey, King of I don't know what, Hoss. I'm so pumped out. Yeah. You telling me this is true? Lisa Marie and a guy who's got mug shots of his pecker on file with the LAPD <laughs> really are married? Well, yeah. It makes me wish I was alive again so I'd go out and kill myself, I'll tell you that. Uh, I can't believe it, man. Somebody's got to be wrong here, Hoss. How could that brat do this to me? Well, here I am, the king, the original macho chick-chasing god of the male hormone. And now my only child, my daughter, has married a 35-year-old freak who likes to sleep under a blanket of Boy Scouts with four <laughs> chimpanzees, a llama, Brooke Shields, and a fat sow. Ah, uh, you left out Elizabeth Taylor. I just said a fat sow. Oh, yeah. Who do you think I was talking about? <laughs> yeah, sorry. This is horrible, Imus. This is actually worse than when Priscilla dumped me for that two-bit kung fu fairy back there. Lisa Marie marrying Michael Jackson. How could you, man? And what the hell do you suppose happened to him? Well... You figure he got tired of potty training the offspring of his Filipino landscapers at jammy parties or whatever the hell it was he was doing? I'm just sick, man. I wish I could drink. You know, that's one big thing that's wrong with this place up here. How can you call it paradise when there ain't no damn drugs or liquor? But it must have been one hell of an interest in weddings, huh? How do you suppose they decided who'd wear the dress? And uh, what did the guests say when they came to the door and got asked, you know, bride or groom? I don't know. Search me? <laughs> Jesus, I man. What if by some freak of nature, they actually have children? Uh, what are they going to look like? Like somebody painted maps of Eastern Europe all over them? <laughs> well, with Michael having that there impedigo or imbroglio or whatever the hell it is going on for him. Yeah, whatever. Jesus, why couldn't he just have been satisfied with shining his weasel? Elvis. Or somebody's weasel <laughs> and left me and my memory out of it. Yeah. And you thought being a dead rock star was easy. Believe me, son, dying is the easy part. Well, let me get the hell on out of here while I still got something left to get out on. Let me see now. Well, you can knock me down, step in my face, slander my name all over the place. But please, not this. I'm in a state of shock. I'm the father in law of a chicken hog. Yeah, Lisa, <laughs> must have been inbred. My only saving grace is the fact, thank God I'm dead. Oh, <laughs> Here's the biggest one he ever had. Sounds like you know I can be found. Say no more, Lord. If you can't come around, at least please tell the phone. Don't be cruel. Too hard is true. Baby, if I made a man, for something I might have said, please don't forget my past.
second most wanted criminal in the world has been apprehended. International terrorist and kidnapper Carlos the Jackal has been captured, while the first most wanted criminal still remains at large, continuing in his role as President of the United <laughs> States, holding an entire country hostage. <laughs> you know, if the new features of his errant crime bill could be applied to crimes of conscience, Clinton might actually get it passed. There he is, Bubblicious, praying in a black church. Of course, if I were in a black church, I'd be praying too. <laughs> Only it wouldn't be for resurrection of the crime bill. This guy is the mighty Morphin power president, changing shape to fit the moment. And on Sunday, he morphed into a Bible-thumping evangelist, telling the congregation it was God's will he make the country as safe as we possibly can. <laughs> now... I don't know if God told him this personally, or he sent a 900-foot Jesus over to the Rose Garden to inform the president of his will, or Bubba just had a divine inspiration all on his own, but there he was, naming God as one of his partisan benefactors. Well, this is typical liberal rhetoric. Instead of being disciples of the Creator, doing God's will, they believe that God believes they are right. Well... How do they know God doesn't condemn the assault weapons ban? Yeah. I think that if Jesus had access to an AK-47, Judas might have rethought the whole 30 pieces of silver deal. <laughs> I also don't think you'd get Jesus to sign up behind the three strikes and you're out plan. No. Correct me if I'm wrong, but in some Western Christian tradition, isn't the sacrament of penance one of the seven rites that confer sanctifying grace? Yeah. Contrition, confession, acceptance of punishment, absolution, the four-step penance plan, and you're clear. Even the Jews get a yearly get-out-of-jail-free card. No kugel and pastrami for 24 hours, and you're off the hook for another 12 months, slow-mo. It's the perpetual second chance. Fine. Arab terrorists commit violent crimes in the name of their god. Would he be in favor of stiffer sentencing? Not if it meant putting his constituents into brand-new mall-sized jails. <laughs> Pakistanis who worship Vishnu and Shiva. I don't think the eight-armed deity would approve of a plan that would leave his followers unarmed at the 7-Eleven. Bubba wants his prayers answered and the crime bill passed. Well, how do you know your prayers weren't already answered, President Clinton? And the answer was no. <laughs> well, he ain't no friend of Hillary's. She ain't no friend of mine. Her husband is another who can't kiss my behind. But we're stuck with both those Clinton. And time keeps dragging on. Let white water keep on rolling, just like a rolling stone. When I was just a baby, my mama told me, son, don't ever be a liberal. They're all such simpletons, like to shoot that Janet Reno, just to watch her die. And when I think about the cabinet, I hang my head and cry. don't remember if he was ever briefed by Dean Hanson or Josh Steiner, that nerdy treasury chief. Roger Altman says he never knew about the RTC. Oh. Oh, Margaret Williams supposedly told him it would paralyze Hillary. If this country were all mine, if these damn white water hearings turned out not to be benign, I'll send those Clintons both to prison, and there they'll have to stay. Think I know now why this Foster, he blew himself. Bill Walker. <laughs> Rush Limbaugh here on the I Miss for the Morning program. It's 31 past the hour in New York. Every morning at the mine, you could see him arrive. He stood six foot six and weighed 245, kind of broad at the shoulder and narrow at the hip. And everybody knew you didn't give no lip to Big John. Big John. Big John. Big bad. I Miss in the Morning. This week, you give yourself. Then again, so is...
is a nice bottle of pink lemonade euphoria. That makes me feel pretty good, too. This Fritopian moment is brought to you by Fritopia, the real fruit beverage for Minute Maid. For the mind, body, and planet. For his sixth or seventh appearance, I'm not sure, I have to look at the computer. Is the aforementioned Paul Begala. Good morning, Mr. Begala. Good morning, Mr. Hyman. Who's been assigned the task of murdering Josh Steiner, you or James? <laughs> I think poor Josh about to die of mortification. How would you like to have your diary in his little notes of Dear Sweet Pea, you're writing to your girlfriend? Dear Sweet Pea, yeah, I saw that. That was, uh, God. That was kind of, of course, with your girlfriend's so young, you probably call her Strange Pea. <laughs> Shut up. If your radio sounds funny in the morning, right, you're one. listening to Imus in the morning. The new Clinton agenda, of course, is designed for the new Imus family. We have long-term health care for senior citizens. Yeah. And we have child care for the kids. Sports Radio. Sports Radio 66. WFAM. Is this a... 20 sports. Scott Minnie, Good morning, Scott. You want to move that Volvo? Hey. Scott. Hey. Hi, man. Yeah. Scott's out here live for my car phone in Saturdays. Yeah. This is the final indignity I've been forced to endure this weekend. Yeah. Hope this serves as a lesson. We won't have to deal with a 30th anniversary concert in 1999. <laughs> Joe Cocker, who opened the show, looked like he was granny dumped. <laughs> if your radio sounds funny in the morning, you're listening to Imus in the morning. If I had to pick one moment which summed up the experience of the three more days of peace and love, it would be a toss-up between a feral, mud-covered nine-inch nail screaming the F-word over and over, yeah. or Metallica leading the crowd in a chant of die, die, die. Because <laughs> for a second there, I thought you'd hit the stage, I man. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Mike Breen, WFAN 2020 Sports, the flagship station for New York Jets football. And a good morning, everybody. Russ Salzberg back with you here on this Tuesday, the 16th day of August, 1994. The number, as always, is 718-937-6666. I had a day off yesterday, played in the Models uh, Golf Tournament. Don't mind saying my team came in second place. Low grows, well, died for second. Plays playing very solid baseball. You, if you can bellyache about that, something's wrong. Sports Radio. baseball, but there's no baseball for now because it's tape five of the strike. My thanks today to Yankee reliever and player rep Paul Gibson, Spitz producing, Jeff Hughes at the controls, and as always, you the fans, until tomorrow, bye-bye. Breeze, mostly sunny skies, and that's what's happening. This is Ian Eagle with 2020 Sports on WFAN. Stay tuned. Mike and the Mad Dog coming up live from Jet Camp right here on New York's flagship station for Notre Dame football. I'm here in the... 56 WFAN, New York. Mike and the Mad Dog. day break. Nice to have you with us on a busy Tuesday. Michael, good afternoon to you. How are you? Oh, music to my ears. First I hear that song, then I hear an ad. <laughs> no, I don't think it's music. Uh, I hear that voice and I realize, damn, I'm underpaid. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we're going uh, uh, to get Cal on here. Did the Jets get a coach yet? <laughs> he is. He's here, Mike. And Mr. I after the update at the top of the hour, Mike and the Mad Dog here at Hofstra. Jet Day. Back in a little bit. So come on back yourself. Good job.
happening. I'm Bill Daughtry with 2020 Sports on WFAN, the flagship station for Notre Dame football. along with Ed Coleman. We have been here since 6 o'clock. We'll be here until 10. Eddie Norfolk has just gone ahead of Columbus 3-2. to All right. There you go. <laughs> we don't know if Kurt Ojala and uh, Kevin Morton are still in. Might have had a couple of good games down there. We were there. All right. We've heard from you just about all evening about your opinions about this strike, what is going on, how it affects us, how it affects you. Now let's bring in somebody who uh, has a... John Hellyer, thanks to uh, Sweeney and everyone inside there and in the newsroom, and Bill Daughtry, and to you, Susan. Thank oh, you, Ed. Thank you. You're thank you, welcome. Susan. I'm Ed Coleman. <laughs> thank you, Bill. Poor Susan. We'll see you guys. We'll see you at 6. Arthritis. Bill Daughtry with 2020 Sports on WFAN, the flagship station for New York Jets football. <laughs> Till midnight tonight. I don't even know who I'm sitting in for. Does it really matter? No, it really doesn't, does it? For the Mets, I guess. I can't play either. No more. There it is. It's the back page of the post today. I hope you saw that. Spelled correctly. No more. Less of more. A lot of people would like less of more. My wife, for example, <laughs> very pleased that I came in from the Cape. Then you're guaranteed to hear it first on the fan. Sports Radio 66, WFAN, New York. Or thinking back to his campaign theme song, maybe don't 
stop thinking about whether there's going to be a tomorrow. <laughs> there you go. And when all seems lost, you still got Ross. Right. Much obliged for having me on your show. Ross Perot, the juggier little Martian. Yeah. from the Imus and Washington Network newsroom. I'm Walter Cronkite. Hi, Walt. I'm David Brinkley. And I'm the often unfairly maligned Imus of the morning, a, a true hero in every sense of the word, if, if only more people would understand. <laughs> but now the news in condensed form. Here in Washington, the majesty of our democracy in action, as George Bush, the patrician, moves steadily toward handing the reins of power to Bill Clinton, the goober. Mr. Bush, back at the White House after some rest and relaxation in Florida, joins us this morning live from the Oval Office to talk about how the process is going. Mr. President, thanks for letting our cameras in there this morning. Always good to see you. Good to have you as our special guest. Glad you could fit us into your schedule. Thanks for making us feel welcome. Good. So, how's it going? We've heard you're depressed. Tried to throw yourself in front of Air Force One the other day. Any truth to that? Hey, <laughs> handing over the reins. Look, you know, but I can poo-poo that one, David. Read my lips. Poo-poo. Happy go lucky fella. That's this leader. Good to hear it. Glad you're okay. Good that you're not about to go out, open a bottle of Valium, take the whole thing like so many M&Ms. <laughs> Quite a bit's being made of the contrast between you and the president-elect. Mannerisms, all of that. He speaks fluently, complete sentences. You, sir, sometimes hopscotch around a bit. Is that a valid observation? Scotch? Hop? No, no. <laughs> Look, he's got, you know, Little Rock, the Arkansas thing, the A word, me, George. You know, words. Gotta string the little buggers together. Verb, comma, pluperfect. Sure. No, no, no. I, I don't think, hey, clarity, that's what we... Job demands, pressure, you know, always, always right there, right? Well stated, Mr. President. Do you have any plans now? Not really. Maybe get a book, start in that presidential library, stare at my bug-eyed wife, those bean banded grandkids, you know. Last sex I had was when I was f***ed to death by Jim Baker, you know. Mr. President, sorry to interrupt, but we have a bulletin just into IIW News Central. Uh, yes, in the wake of last week's unsuccessful attempt to communicate with the galaxy Andromeda through her brassiere, noted Long Island businesswoman Bernadette Castro has just called a news conference to announce 
Bigfoot is living in her basement. <laughs> Ms. Castro says the elusive creature, long thought by many to be mythological, is a large, in her words, well-equipped male <laughs> that just suddenly appeared at her sumptuous Long Island home. And unlike the dumb animal scientists always speculated Bigfoot might be, is instead incredibly intelligent, engaging her often in discussions of metaphysical abstractions, knows how to shoot the moon and hearts, and shares her belief in the existence of flying saucers, though, unlike Miss Castro, has never actually been on one. In Little Rock, Arkansas, questions of integrity continue to bedevil Bill Clinton even at this late date, particularly a rumor making the rounds that Clinton is romantically linked to the television actress Marky Post. Asked specifically about the matter today, Clinton replied that he had never taken a position on Ms. Post. Leaving reporters to guess, though, knowing the fable Clinton elusiveness, whether that meant he didn't know Ms. Post or merely liked it on the bottom. <laughs> and finally, in a controversial move in Albany, authorities have decided to reinstate former Judge Saul Walkler to the position which he had just resigned in disgrace, that of Chief Judge of the Court of Appeals. However, Walkler will be required to continue wearing an electronic bracelet, though not around his ankle, but rather around his penis, <laughs> where officials pointed out it would have served him a hell of a lot better in the first place. <laughs> you made me cry when you said champion of the world, Riddick Bowe, Rock Newman. Good morning, Mr. Newman. I must I'd rather be knowing nothing this morning than speaking to you, my main man. How you doing, babe? I'm doing real well now that I'm talking to you. How's that fine looking woman here? My wife is just wonderful and still a big fan of yours. You know, I mean, we sit around in D.C. in the morning, don't do anything except listen to you. We don't go to work until after 10 o'clock. I, well, I hope you don't run into Donnie someplace. You don't want to hear that. Well, I mean, I tell Donnie the same thing. Oh, you do? Yeah. <laughs> if your radio light sucks in the morning, you're listening to I Miss in the Morning. I'm in a pro-choice, but that don't mean I'm for killing babies. I hear you. What are you looking at? <laughs> Nothing. I agree with you. I want them to stop killing babies. Okay. They start killing veteran radio. <laughs> <laughs> I Miss in the Morning. Sports Radio 66, WFAN. Man Highway Patrol. Boomer. Today. 
could use SNET for out-of-state long distance, too. Or what if you need to stay on the job even when you're on the road? Link cellular service from SNET. Or maybe you need to advertise your pet emporium. SNET Yellow Pages. Or how about a big business-like phone system on a small budget with call forwarding, call waiting, and of course, speed calling. SNET Centralink. And someday, it may be routine to use interactive video to go to the big meeting when you're stuck at home with a small problem. <coughs> Thanks to ISNET, Connecticut's information superhighway. Good old SNET will always place your business call, but it pays to know the new SNET. We go beyond the call. Copyright 1994 Infinity Broadcasting. All rights reserved. Imus in the Morning is a presentation of WFAN and the Westwood Radio Network. This concludes the entertainment and revenue generating portion of your broadcast day. We now return you to the rest of your local programming schedule. An indecipherable embarrassment of broadcasting incompetence that compelled the station to subscribe to the Imus in the Morning program in the first place. The entertainment and revenue generating portion of the broadcast day, the Imus in the Morning program, will resume tomorrow morning. Check your local listings for time and schedule. For sports scores and sports news, it's WFAN 2020 Sports. Sports, the flagship station for New York Jets football. <laughs> Salzburg with you here on this Wednesday, the 17th day of August, 1994, the number 718-937-6666 for you to call. I'll be here, of course, till 1 o'clock. And uh, the number is now 60. 60 games that have been lost due to the baseball strike, which is now at the 1 o'clock. Then we give way to Mike and the Mad Dog. Main order of business, though, remains a strike. And, uh, folks, we're in day six. I'm telling you, when we get to two weeks, it's a real gray area. It's a point where something has to move. Somebody has to make progress. Otherwise, the season's going to be over. I'm Joe McElvain, Stevie Cohn, producing, and Jeff Hughes at the controls, Greeny and Olden with the updates, and as always, you the fans. Today is day six of the strike. I'm sure tomorrow we'll be talking about day seven. Until that time, Ross Salzburg saying bye-bye, so long, and farewell. Seven degrees, and that's what's happening. I'm Paul Olden with 2020 Sports on WFAN, New York's flagship station of Notre Dame football. I really miss baseball. He dreamed about being a major league baseball player. But the player deserves his share of the money. The question is, what is that share? We never know that because the owners will never tell you exactly what they produce in terms of revenues and in terms of income.
give you a one. Tampa, I'll give you two. Tampa, anybody, late, and the Rams and the Niners. You know, you don't want the Rams anymore against the Niners. Please. Definitely not. Right in the Six hours, as a matter of fact, six until midnight. Thanks tonight to uh, Jeff Smullyan and Rick Majerus. Thanks to Sweeney and uh, who's over there? Rick's on the other side. And now Vince Felici with another update that nothing's still happening except Jose Lima. Former heavyweight champion of the world, Riddick. Big Daddy Bo. You know what, man? I hate that word, Bo. You did say Riddick Bo. No. Well, ho hold on a second. I didn't say you're the former Riddick Bo. It would say you are what you feel. I feel like I'm the champ, so. Yeah, but you're not the champ. Look, yeah, you can't. Okay. Okay. I'm going to have to come down and knock you out. You ain't man enough, Big Daddy. You don't think so? You know I'll go upside your head with a sledgehammer and a finger snap. Good <laughs> <laughs> days from 10 to 1 on Sports Radio 66, WFAN News. WFAN 2020 Sports. Good evening at 10 o'clock. I am Vince DeLisi. Another happening. I am Vince DeLisi with 2020 Sports and WFAN, the flagship station for New York Jets football. <laughs> Apparently it's all mine now. 10 4 on the fan. Chris Moore here till midnight. Vinny just told me it's all mine now. Don't get nervous. Yeah. Don't get the... Uh... So updates everything. Hey, Sean Anderson signed with the Flyers. You like that, huh? Woo! i tell you what. I, I did that story just for you. Some serious sports news, boy, when Sean Anderson can sign with the Flyers. Now, how many... What was his... Sean Cassidy might as well sign with the Flyers. You know, like Sean Anderson. Lonnie Anderson. Uh, Louis Anderson. More people would go see Lonnie than Anderson Sean. Anderson Little. I mean, Sean Anderson. That was just for you. Oh, oh. no. Baby should be moving soon. I envision that why after the baby's born, you and Steve misplacing the child. Like, you know how people put their car keys or their purse on top of the car to open it up and stuff? I would never. Or leave it in a shopping cart at Walmart. Oh, uh, no. I thought you had it. <laughs> <laughs> Your radio sounds funny in the morning. You're listening to I'm us in the morning. What are you going to name this kid? Uh, we don't know yet, but we like Shana. Simba. And we like... <laughs> Shut up. Something with the letter S. I don't know. We're stupid. We're... <laughs> 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 Shut up. Uh, Liz, is he stupid anyway? <laughs> Another little boy on the joint? <laughs> no, but I think he wants to pay a lot of money for somebody to do it again. You, Bob White. He just settled out of court. What? He's going to give this kid like 80 million bucks not to tell anybody. Not to tell anybody what? That, um, he touched him on the joint. <laughs> cool. Wait a minute. I have an idea. Give me the phone. Yeah, yeah. Order a pizza. Um, hello? Could I have information, please? I need the number of Michael Jackson. He, like... He touched me and Beavis on the joint, and we want, like, 80 million bucks to keep quiet about it. <laughs> he didn't touch me. Shut up, Beavis. You're ruining it. Oh, um, yeah. He touched me, too. Yeah. And he, like, made us kiss his monkey. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And he made us spank his monkey, too. <laughs> yeah. And we, um, we saw him do sick things to that little dude from Home Alone. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Anything else? Um, yeah. Do you have, like... Prince Albert in the can? <laughs> well, tell him to flush when he's through. <laughs> hey, butthead, call Burger World and order, like, 20,000 hamburgers. I once heard this radio dude do that, and he got, like, got a lot of free hamburgers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's cool. <laughs> You know the latest fashion crap. 
Imus often says he most admires is loyalty. Allegiance to a person, a cause, or what have you. A current case in point is the way the I-Man, as he's fondly known, fiercely defends President Bill Clinton, his wife Hillary Rodham Clinton, and what they're struggling so hard to try to do. Quite so far as I can tell is to turn their phasers to the next notch past stun and vaporize our nation. <laughs> but that's just silly me. Imus continues to point out that he really likes Bill Clinton. Whether or not, as he often concedes, he may be the last major media figure on the national scene who dies. Well, he remains quick to express his admiration of Mrs. Clinton, saying things like, you know, she's really smart. At a time when many critics view her as the shrill shrew of Pennsylvania Avenue, who is single-handedly, although with the encouragement of her husband, trying to finish the last great uncompleted project of the New Deal. Yeah the socialization of health care, and the bankrupting of the republic. <laughs> well, what the heck? If she turned $1,000 of her cake bake money into 100000 I guess maybe there is a case to be made for turning her loose with a trillion dollars of your money. <laughs> that is, if she can still get Jim Price, down there at the humongous Chicken Incorporated of Arkansas, to guide her in her wizardry with the old Clinton checkbook, eh? <laughs> well, here's the thing that puzzles me, dear listener. If the buck stops at Clinton's desk, and boy, in this administration, does that ever take on additional implications. <laughs> on this radio program, the script stops at the I-Man. <laughs> How then does one reconcile these facts? That he himself defends the president in those seemingly endless rants about him, while at the same time he permits the production of pieces like, well, this. <laughs> and it's not just me. Yeah. Everybody who appears on this program, with one glaring exception, has an orgasm just thinking about Clinton being led out of the White House, handcuffed to Hillary, <laughs> with his raincoat over both of their heads. <laughs> Followed closely by Stephanopoulos, Cutler, the pathetic Mark Guerin, Dee Dee, or Double Dumb Myers, <laughs> Princess Watusi, or whatever the hell her name is, who's Hillary's chief of staff, yeah. the entire cabinet, and oh yes, that ill-tempered Caillou's Mandy Grunwald. <laughs> Not for nothing, but if, God forbid, she were dead, Michael Jackson would be trying to buy her bones. <laughs> I mean, provided we still have a country left after the last of these dimwits have cleared the key bridge, I can see the inscription now over the doorway to the Clinton Presidential Library. Never have so few screwed up so much or so many in so short a time. <laughs> Yikes. Yeah. There's a wild concept for you. A library in the state of Arkansas. <laughs> Excuse me, Melville Dewey, but I don't think so. <laughs> and the president gives Barbara Streisand's concert performance a thumbs-up review, I man. A, how can you like Elvis and Barbara Streisand? <laughs> uh -huh. Uh -huh. How do you resolve that? Makes no sense. He should be caned. <laughs> Maybe he's hosing her. Oh, you yeah. know, that's not... That's, See, that's there what, you go. Those, that's what Nancy Shapiro was talking about. about. Can't you say uplifting things about the president? I can't think of any. Hi, <laughs> Wes. This ain't your mother's morning show. First Lady says the stress of her public life has uh, taxed every fiber of her being. That's her quote. Well, she's like Mary Jo Butterfugo, except she doesn't have a bullet in her. <laughs> <laughs> this is in the morning.
on the I Miss the Morning program, nationally syndicated gossip columnist Liz Smith. Good morning, Liz. Barber's Concert Tour is packing them in all over the country with people paying the equivalent of the G. Hey, Bubba, what's that you got? Well, um, just exactly how much violent programming do you watch, Beavis? <laughs> Can we run a little faster than to lead it to the past? There's a buzz right behind us and it's breathing down our back. The cops are looking for us everywhere we go, waiting for our one wrong move, and in the jail we go. We don't know nobody nothing, and we don't make no deal. We're swinging chips on motors, and we're not eaters on wheels. Controversial tennis tournament tones down its act. Good morning, this is Mike Breen with sports. It's the Volvo International Tournament, New Haven, Connecticut, experimenting with innovation such as... Say thank you very much for joining us. Thank you. How are you doing? Well, I'm doing fine, and I guess uh, right now you're doing fine, too. Minor league hero Jose Lima. With some special insight last night on WFAN Radio in New York. Well, well what's the point of that? Just to show that they're human beings? Well, no. No, well, no. wherever we are, we're there on the FM dial somewhere. <laughs> Did you learn the f***ing call letters? <laughs> right below the country station. Great. <laughs> With uh, Scott Minnie, Scott so. That was Dark Side of the Moon, classic rock from the Pink Floyd boys. And speaking of that, I'm here with the dark side of humanity, Imus in the morning, who, but for the grace of the justice system, would be what Eric Smith would become if he were allowed to go free. Back from our little physical diagnostic trip, are we? Yeah. I have to tell you, Dono, the image of you, prone in a claustrophobic, tomb-like environment, is somewhat heartening, even if it's an MRI machine and not a coffin. I think I know what the problem is with your back fats. You pull the muscle, patting yourself on it. <laughs> Mr. I'll be so big and powerful in 96, I can't stand it. You probably threw it out trying to carry that ego around on your shoulders. <laughs> Let me ask you something. Sure. Have you ever been healthy? No. <laughs> Aside from the flus, colds, and general icky deals you come up with on a weekly basis, we've suffered alternately through floppy lungs, torn rotator cuffs, and pulled hamstrings from that gym fix running program you used to subject yourself to, and on Unfortunately, stop just before it did for you what it did for him. And yes, we've suffered. Because not only do we experience your every pain, sneeze, ache, spasm, and cough right along with you, we're also subjected to the incessant, tortured, pathetic whine that follows all these symptoms. Well, I don't feel well. Uh, I just had major lung surgery. Man, I can't tell you how bad I feel. Jesus, if Mother Teresa heard your show, she'd move up to Southport. Forget the MRI machine. Why don't you just go lie down in Michael Jackson's oxygen tent? Yeah. Hey, looks like the beard deal with Lisa Marie didn't work out as well as he'd first hoped, huh? Well, the image damage control didn't do anything to stop the lawsuits. Well, no. Now, the stepfather of the kid that Mikey allegedly molested has filed a civil suit for breaking up his family by showering them with expensive of gifts? I mean, don't get me wrong. I'm not condoning child molestation, oh, no. but didn't this guy already get paid off once? Now who's the one exploiting the kid? He makes Macaulay Calkin's dad look like Jean Valjean. Forget Amway. You want a money-making industry that you can run right out of your home? Pile the kids into the car and take them over to Michael Jackson's house. <laughs> I have to admit it was a pretty lame move, thinking that marrying Elvis's kid was going to take the heat off him. Well, Although the union seemed feasible to me, she certainly could have been attracted to a larger-than-life reclusive pop star who has problems with drug dependency. Yeah. But if he really wanted to distract attention, he shouldn't have gotten hooked up with a chick who looks like a little boy. <laughs> Weird stuff, my man. Yeah. The other day, I see them on the cover of some magazine with a slug line the Honeymooners. There's a concept for you, huh? Yeah. Hey, Norton, come on down. I want to show you something. Lisa Marie, you want to go to the moon? I'll take you to the moon. Bang. Zoom. <laughs> Woman, 
and she's gonna mess your mind. Salzburg 
with you here on this Thursday, the 18th day of August, 1994. The number is always for you to call, 718-937-6666. Oh, baby, whole bunch of stuff to talk about. Like what? Like the lack of baseball? It, it has now gotten... To degrees right now. That's what's happening. I'm Mike Breen, WFAN 2020 Sports, the flagship station for New York Jets football. Uh, Roddy Ross Salzberg back here on the fan. 1108 is the time. 718-937-6666 is the number as we head into our number two of this 18th day of August 1994. I will be with you until 1 o'clock, at which time Mike and the Mad Dog take over from Giants training camp. I'll be talking football today, and then after today, I'm on vacation for a week. And when I come back, I still bet you that the strike...